in Quebec, every other person names their cat Minou, which is sort of like the word for like kind of cute, but also is just kind of the word for kitty. Oh. So like half of Quebecois cats are just named Kitty. Kitty the cat. Yeah, that's silly. You got to name you. Everyone knows you name a pet after a food. The last food you ate oh, is your no. pet's name. Get my dog shawarma. Yeah. So mine would be oh, mine would be chickpea. That's cute. That is a cute name. Or it would be off-brand LaCroix. <laughs> I guess mine would be, yeah, shawarma. <laughs> That's also good, though. I suppose so. Um, all right, Scott. Tristan. We are about to talk about something, and I want to make sure that you know because we are professionals. Yeah. We are podcasting professionals. Yeah, of course. We are um, grown-ups. Uh, we are both now in our 30s. So we are. You don't, you don't have to remind me of that. <laughs> we, are, I, we are. We are. We, we are adults. We are mature. It's very fresh for me. But yeah, I agree. All right. Um, today, the topic of today's episode is featured around a specific uh, relief that, if someone less mature were to look at it, might think that it is dong-like. Oh. You might see that I put an eggplant emoji as the little icon for. You um, did. For the script, I didn't notice. I, I mean, I noticed it, but I didn't. I didn't put the pieces together. So, what you're saying is, it the topic that we're going to be talking about is, in a way, phallic. It is not phallic, and I we have to be extremely sure oh. that we do not, okay, under any circumstances, make such juvenile jokes on this grown up serious podcast by grown up serious people. Yeah, I immediately apologize. I'm so sorry. You cannot call it a dong. You cannot call it nope. a tallywhacker, a schlong, okay. a All penis. Right. All right. Uh, Should I be taking notes? Shrimp emoji, okay. eggplant emoji, uh, wang, wang doodle. Okay. Ding dong. Uh-huh. Uh, pecker. Okay, yeah. Boner. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Y- even, even, if the, even if the joker's involved. Yep. None of those. All of those, all of those words, none of them. All right. Can't do any of them. Uh, one-eyed monster is that? That's like an older one. <laughs> yeah, we're just turning um, this into the uh, the the what's it called? The the Austin, the Austin Powers, Powers two thing. joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't do that. No, because we're professionals. We're adults. Yes, I'm Tristan Johnson, who has never who has never received a single joke about dongs in relation to my last name ever. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'll give I'll do you one better. My brother's name is Andrew. His middle name uh, is Philip. So when he goes by like the first initial, second initial, and then last name, even though I know our last name is pronounced Nicewander, most people pronounce it Niswander. So what they call out when when they're doing things like a a you penis know, wander. It's, uh, it's yes, a p- a penis wander. <laughs> a penis wander. A um, penis wander. <laughs> your poor brother. Oh, um, I didn't realize this. Um, I accidentally pushed the record button, uh, and that this is actually a podcast now. No, we don't no, know how to edit podcasts. It just goes out as soon include, as we're recording it. Tristan, we can't include it. We said all the dick things. Um, yeah. So after we release it, we'll have to find some way to cut it out. I don't know. We'll okay. just okay. How about this, listeners? Yeah, yeah. Um, skip to this time right now so that you don't see any inappropriate potty humor on this podcast. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wash your ears out with soap. We never said anything. Yeah. Um, Uh, so this is a podcast. (laughs) This is a podcast. My name is Scott Penis Wander. (laughs) Scott Penis Wander. (laughs) That's not true. Uh, my name is Scott Nice Wander. I know... Nothing. I if if anything, I now know less of what we're talking about than what I started with because now I know, I I know things that it's not, <laughs> but I still don't know what it is. And uh, that's my role on the show is just to sort of show up and be like you, audience member, and figure out. You just said and, member. Dang it! Oh come on. <laughs> All right. My name's Tristan, son of yep. John. There you go, Tristan, son of John. And I research the things mm-hmm. to make content um, for you on internet. That's true. You do do that. And I think we've established we're both adults. Mm-hmm. We're, we're both professional adult people. Yeah. And what we're going to be doing in this episode is just what we always do. Nothing funny about it. We're just going to talk about some sort of artifact. 
some sort of of ancient alien thing. Yeah, I guess we didn't even clarify that. This is a podcast called It's Probably Not Aliens, Mm -hmm. where we discuss and debunk a lot of ancient astronaut theory, uh, mostly because of the History Channel show Ancient Aliens. And along the way, we get to learn a lot about the uh, real world history behind people, places, artifacts, cool things. And I think that's what we're going to be discussing today is some sort of artifact that definitely looks very normal and not suggestive in any way. Yeah. Yes. No, no, okay. no penis references yep. here. Um, From here so, on. Out. So uh, today we're going back to the triangle, the triangle building country. Oh, the big triangle buildings. We're not going to the we triangle like buildings. We're going to no. triangle building country. Triangle country. Yeah. This also reminds me because of very good news. Um, because the day that we were recording this, yesterday, we had um, very on brand. Another ship got stuck in the Suez Canal for a oh. few hours. Another big boat oh. got stuck. So, And we're doing an episode on Egypt today. So Ooh. I just could draw some attention. That, Feels uh, good, right? We 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 have to really pause to mention to just mention at some point how magical of a week it was when Big Boat was stuck. Yeah, take me back, take me back to the boat being stuck. It's right up there with the time where Trump got COVID, and the news was just an ongoing series of unbelievably hilarious yeah. stuff things. Uh, or thirty to fifty feral hogs. Ah, uh, a classic. Yeah, an absolute classic. Huh, but we're going back. We're going back to Triangle Country today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to talk Egypt. about something that I very dismissively, when we had uh, Mildred on and we did our grab bag, I said, I didn't even have time enough to talk about this because it was nothing. And approximately <coughs> every human being on the planet Earth said, no, you have to do it. You have to make an episode about this. Yeah. So now we've dedicated an entire episode about this thing. What is this thing? Well, this is called the Dendera Light. Okay. So if you will look at this extremely normal picture, uh, you will see (laughs) what is a wall engraving relief in Dendera, which Uh to uh, the normal eye looks like uh, you know, snake, flower, and some religious yes. stuff going on. But uh-huh. no, that is incorrect. That is an alien or advanced light uh-huh. bulb. Oh, and it's not anything else other than those two possibilities yes. that we've said. And here's right. how we know. Did you know that the Egyptian tombs have no black soot from okay. torches? Okay, so this is something that has popped up on Ancient Aliens a lot. Yes, this is like one of like the big ones in Ancient this Aliens. This is one cycle. of the big ones they always talk about where it's like, well, if everything was torch lit, then why, how come there aren't ashes on the ceilings of the inside the pyramids mm-hmm. or the, any, any of the tombs and such? And it's always stuck with me as like, is that even true? Because if so, wild. Wild so indeed. Know. So uh, I don't know. I'm I'm with them right now. The other thing uh, that is claimed that there's not enough oxygen in these tombs to even have torches. Oh, so you would, all, you would suffocate. You would su- you would suffocate in there, and then what? It would it would just become what then? A tomb? <laughs> Heaven forbid. Heaven um, forbid. So obviously, because these things aren't here, the only answer is that it's an alien light bulb. <laughs> That's correct. Also, wild to me that they would... This is, again, one of those ancient alien things where they jump to alien light bulb and not just like, what if ancient Egypt was so advanced that they were able to invent a light bulb by themselves independently? Nope. As was aliens who gave it to them. Of course. Yep. Couldn't have people of color inventing their own light bulbs. Couldn't do it. Um but but furthermore, it, this it, this fits into a lot of areas of not only ancient astronaut theory, but also into a lot of realms of pseudo archaeology. We kind of talked about this when we talked about Vamanas back in episode two, I want to say, of this show or episode yeah, three two, of this show. Uh, yeah, one of those early ones. Yeah, yeah. and um, that there's a, like a building theory that uh, the, the ancient times they had much more advanced technology than we do today, or 
they had at least technology comparable to today. We talked about that with the Kambaya airplanes mm -hmm. and um, and all those things. And you're going to find a lot of uh, similarities with the Kambaya airplane in this little bit, which was a golden uh, fish. Fish. It was a fish. That they said looked like an airplane. Uh-huh. Was that one of those ones where if you put more plane parts on it, it became a plane? Yeah. If you put an engine on it, then suddenly it's a plane. Mm-hmm. So, so let's like, like to look at this. What you see here uh, when you're looking at it is something called the Dendarolite. Um, that is the nickname it has. Yes. And it's part of, uh, it's on three different reliefs inside this one temple. And at first glance, you could see it looks a little bit like something called a crook's tube with a sort of socket at one end and a cable traveling underneath and a snake shaped filament inside. Yeah. So it, the, the cable coming off of it is really to me like sort of the oh that kind of looks there that looks a little convincing it does look like it's sort of plugged into somewhere and that it's like you know mm -hmm. it's leading somewhere off screen shall we say i i do have to say i i hope eventually we, uh, for our listeners sake we we uh we start we go back to doing episodes that don't require uh visuals <laughs> yeah 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 um next week for sure for sure. I've been slacking on tweeting out the visuals, but yeah, this I will for sure tweet out. I'm, I right clicked save as before we even started recording. So. Yeah. So but basically what a Crooks tube is, is a really early attempt at a light bulb that was made uh, by William Crooks in about 1869. And it is no jokes. Do not make any 69 jokes. OK. Um, anyways, uh, it's basically like a, a sort of simple version of like a cathode ray tube where you uh, 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 take a uh, glass tube that has a little bit of a vacuum inside of it and you run electrical discharge through it and you can see that it kind of makes a glowing sort of gas thing happen. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It almost looks like there's like a, an open flame inside and it's like spewing out, it's like shooting out these like green, this like, yeah, green light. It's like, it looks very retro futuristic. Mm-hmm. So this Dendarolite's often seen like with this person, this priest holding it up and there's some figures around it. One of the figures seems to be directing the light bulb upwards. And then uh, slightly off the cut of the picture we have, we have, you see something called a Jed pillar, which is shown around the bulb and the hands are apparently connected to um, what is inside looks like a filament or a snake or a snake filament. Yes, a snake like filament. A, a snake with filament-like features. Mm -hmm. As well as uh, a depiction of a baboon holding knives in its hands, which, um, you know, like all light bulbs. Oh, yeah, like all light bulbs have. Mm -hmm. We all know that about light bulbs, how they always have baboons with knives yeah. in their hands. So this theory was proposed by, and I shit you not when I researched it, it was, it was proposed by, quote, a Norwegian electrical engineer whose name oh, okay. never actually seems to ever come to light. <laughs> this is a guy who built a whole career around light bulbs and was like, I see a light bulb in everything now. This is Mr. Everything light bulb. is a light bulb. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then it got to worldwide uh, prominence by uh, two authors from Austria, a guy named Peter Krasa and another person named Rainer Habeck. You know what it's like, though? It's it's sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. It's like that tweet where it's like guy who's only seen Boss Baby sees second movie. Mm, getting a lot of Boss Baby vibes from this one. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what it's like. Guy who electrical engineer sees Egyptian carvings and is like, hmm, getting a lot of electrical engineer vibes out of this thing. Yeah. And that happens a lot because uh, a lot of bad uh, pseudo archaeology seems to come from scientists who study one specific thing going into mm -hmm. a field they know nothing about and then being like, hmm, looks a lot like the thing that I study. What a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so these two Austrian authors wrote this book on the Dendarolites called uh, Das Licht der Ferronen uh, Hochtechnologie und Elektrischer Strom im Arten Egyptian. Just rolls off the or, tongue, doesn't it? Or uh, Light of the Pharaohs, High Technology and Electricity in Ancient Egypt. That is a nice title, though. Light of the Pharaohs. Very mm -hmm. cool. And then they also referred to a person by the name of Zeichnung Gardenbein, 
who uh, apparently was an electrical engineer who tested the hypothesis that this was a light bulb and made a working model of the Dendera The problem, okay. though, is that this, na- this person's name, uh, for any German speaker who hasn't turned it off from the last thing I said in German, uh, would laugh because that is not a real name. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> what? That, that name is uh, German for drawing thread bulb. <laughs> Wait, so the... This person does not exist. That is the correct, yes. Oh, wow. It does seem that these two Austrian authors seem to know a lot of fictitious electrical curl engineers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pretty enormous hole. Yeah, so that's what we're getting off. This is, this is the basis of the Dendera light theory uh, okay. that comes from. So then ancient aliens uh, made that whole claim about how there's these there's no what's called um, like lamp black. Yeah. Yeah. What are the what are the odds that the, that it is a real person's name? And it's just one of those like uh, very coincidental, like a, like how Usain Bolt is super fast because he bolts, you know, ah. so, you know, one of those sorts of names. It's Joey Jojo Jr. Shabadoo type situation. Yeah, like a like a, like an Otto, Dr. Otto Octavius suddenly becoming octopus like. Yeah, that is a that is a strange coincidence. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying it can happen. I think we talked I mean, uh, last time or a few times ago about um, how Dr. Victor von Fries just happens to become a cryo scientist. That's, yeah. that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the, there's the, main, so the other big thing and the reason that they say that this is definitely uh, a case is because there's no lamp black like soot found from torches or anything like that in Egyptian tombs. There's a couple problems with this. Um, the first one being is that there is um, black soot in almost every Egyptian temple. And okay, tomb. so that that pretty much takes care of my first question. <laughs> um, yeah, the, so like the answer, like there's no there's no black soot except for all of the places where there are except for tons of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was actually at the Temple of Hathor some. Um, they actually found a big spot of it and cleaned off. Uh, which is actually the same temple where the uh, Dendera light is, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they cleaned off the uh, ceiling and they found a brightly colored painting that had never been seen before because it was just so covered in lamp black. <laughs> All right. So not only is there some, but uh, it is enough to fully coat entire things around it. Yes. Now, now this is definitely conflating a few things because there is, and I, I, when I was doing research about this, I found several sort of rebuttals to this statement. The first one being the obvious that there is a uh, lamp black in these things. It just, it, uh-huh. it is a thing that, uh, that does exist. But um, apparently in some Egyptian uh, constructions, there is a, at least not, there's no, not no, uh, to, not lamp black, but there is less than we would expect. And there is a few explanations for that. And it is possible also that a lot of that lamp black came after, uh, later on, by people who were exploring the region, you know, like okay. Tomb Raiders and stuff like that. All Laura right. Cross and such. People who didn't have light bulbs on. Mm-hmm. But uh, the solutions are that, or the answers are a couple things. One, they didn't use torches per se, but they did use uh, a lot of sophisticated sources of light. Um, some of the mm. most fancy ones would be that they would actually surprisingly effectively use like polished brass plates to sort of redirect yeah. sunshine into uh, some of these places. That's on that's that's some legend of Zelda shit. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, they also though that obviously only worked so far. They also used candles, a uh, specific uh, type of candle that doesn't actually produce a lot of soot and smoke. Um huh. And actually, they were so sophisticated that um, they, they measured their shifts by these candles. So like if you were working and oh. painting the inside of these things, you would light the candle. And then when the candle burnt out, you knew it was uh, quitting time. Oh, now what if you were working? What if you worked late? What if you worked double shifts? Would you be burning the candle at both ends? Oh, well, well that actually would be half shift. Right. But do you? I know. I know. I know you want to do the thing. I, I know that technically you're right. I know that technically you're right. That's the only way that I'm ever right. Yeah. But also my, what I said is also. I want to, I want to commend you for, for making the connection. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I get the, the good joke. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, um, <clears throat> so, so, <laughs> so 
Go back to being smart, Tristan. Um, that's going <laughs> to take a minute. Um, <laughs> the other thing, too, is that they also used... Because, okay, so a lot of the soot and ash and stuff like that is made yeah. from burning torches, typically, that are made of wood. Uh, wood made okay. from trees. Now... Um, I don't know if you know too much about the geography or the sort of um, general state of plant life in Egypt. (laughs) It's very it's it's pretty sandy. Yes. Uh, Trees not exactly in huge supply. Don't have a lot of them. Okay. No. Although I know that in I know in Animal Crossing, you can only palm like the coconut trees only grow in sand. So did they have a lot of like coconut? No. Well, they had one kind of tree that's important, actually. Okay. Because you can notice that like uh, Egyptians wrote on papyrus, they didn't have, they didn't make it out of wood pulp. They made it out of like, uh, what was it called? Like wetland sedge. Oh. Which is like a sort of grass. Oh, cool. But they also had a lot of olive trees um, because what they did, and in a lot of the Mediterranean world, this was the case, they Mm -hmm. were big producers of olives, uh, which can be pressed to make olive oil. And olive yes. oil does not just become a low smoke point tasty treat when making Mediterranean food. It can also yum, yum, yum. be burned in a lamp. And they had these sort of olive oil lamps that were a fairly common sight. And they also don't produce a lot of soot. You would probably know, uh, you probably recognize the look of an olive oil lamp yourself. Because um, did you ever wonder when you were a kid why the quote unquote lamp in Aladdin looked like a teacup oh. or, a tea, or a teapot? Oh, yeah is that a that's an oil lamp. that's an oil lamp that's a, a little yeah wait what part of it makes the light you put oil inside of it and then you light the edge and the edge sort of um lights up oh cool yeah. i'm gonna google that real quick <laughs> aladdin i wow i cannot spell aladdin to save my life how many quick spell aladdin um a L A D D I N. Is it in the script? Did you write it in the script? No, I just. No, uh, you got it right. You got it right. Yeah, uh, it's just uh, name. I got confused by the. I didn't. I. I didn't. I thought it was double L's, not double D's. I can't say double D's on this episode. Of the podcast. <laughs> Anyway, move on. <laughs> yeah, so 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 um not so either the light source so in the ones where there isn't a lot of lamp black it's because they used like these candles or they used um like lamps that were not exactly high in soot production okay. or they did. The other thing too that also showed up in a lot of these is that a lot of them had their interiors decorated before they built the roofs on them. So their other source of light was the sun. <laughs> the sun. Okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah, and then when talking about uh, there also not being like a whole lot of light in some of these places and that they were they had like low oxygen, stuff like that. First of all, there's a lot of cases of people using torches in these in the pyramids, in these temples. They definitely had enough oxygen to make these things. Yeah, I mean, we can go in there now, right? Mm-hmm. But I guess we have flashlights, so... But British people call those torches, so... Yeah. The other thing, too, is that these places weren't exactly designed to be lit well because these aren't places that people were supposed to be in. Right. If anything, they would be robbers, and if their torches went out, that would be a good thing because they would like if they never escaped. Yeah, no, that's great for... (laughs) That's actually a good thing. Yeah, it's actually why a lot of these tombs were um, not successfully plundered until the 19th century, and that was mostly because of dynamite that they were able to do that. Oh, boy. Don't you just love every time you hear about what the 19th century people did to Egypt? I love how careful they were. I love how... uh, Did you know they ate mummies? Yeah, I know. They, they ground up mummies these. into a powder, and not only did they use it as a uh, pigment of paint, mummy brown, uh-huh. uh, there are some famous paintings that have ground up people in them, but they also uh, powdered and they took it as a medicine um, yum. in a very normal thing that we do. Yum, 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 yum. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotta get that mummy jerky. <laughs> did you ever see that uh, Futurama episode where the, he eats the ancient mummified kings because they taste like jerky? <laughs> I'm sure I have. I've not watched Futurama in so long. Since my college days, and I'm an old man now. Aw. 
It's okay. Um, but yeah, like, so there was oxygen in the tombs. Uh, there was many sources of light that do not create soot, or there actually was soot, depending upon, you know, what situation and context you're talking about. So that, that part kind of goes away. Um, so then, right. so that, that's definitely what the Dendarolite isn't. Right. There, so we've, we've sort of established there's lots of other ways they could have had light or used light. And if they didn't have light, then that's also fine for robbers and things. Um, so it feels like maybe this light isn't a light. Um, but we do have an image of it. Mm -hmm. So instead of what it's not, the good question would come up is, what is it? Because if it's not a light, Tristan, then like my brain only thinks it's one other thing. And it's the thing you told me that couldn't mention in this episode. Well, there might be a third thing. There might be a third thing? Yeah. And oh. I'm going to tell you about it. Awesome. After this. Oh, no. All right. Man, that's some good Probs Not Aliens we're listening to right now. It sure is, Tristan, but don't you wish there was more learning that we could do outside of this podcast? I specifically, I don't know about you, but I like to learn from my favorite online creators who are both experts in their field and super engaging. That's extremely specific. Well, good news, everyone, because today's episode is sponsored by Nebula Classes. Tristan, have you heard of Nebula? Yes, actually, this is a really great thing is that we've been part of the Nebula family now for a little bit. A uh, really great platform where a bunch of creators like us uh, have been pooling together our resources to make a place where we can share content and uh, and prop each other up. That's exactly right. And Nebula Classes is a new part of Nebula where you get to learn super interesting subjects directly from your favorite creators. Can I list some out for you, Tristan, that I think our audience would love? Yes. You you hesitated on that one. I don't. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I think you can do it. Okay, cool. I believe in you. Thank you. Bright Trip has a class called the ABCs of Architecture that deepens your understanding about the world around you, so that the next time that you visit a new region or country, you're able to better understand its history and culture through its architecture. Doesn't that sound nice? Yeah, you could be annoying in the exact same way that I am. <laughs> That's scary. True, that is. Uh, Sam from Wendover also has a class called Persuasive communication, which I think anyone who likes this podcast would appreciate, or even just if you like picking apart a certain TV show that talks about ancient astronauts, I think you could maybe learn how they try to be persuasive with their arguments. Yeah, and this is the guy who makes airline logistics interesting, so yeah. <laughs> uh, you know it's good. You know he's good at it. Super good. And Tristan, there is tons more of these classes on Nebula, uh, gorgeously produced, as well as Nebula Talks, which are not uh, a whole series of classes but rather just inspirational short form guest lectures. A little bit easier Ooh. to digest all around. Options for everyone. Maybe we should make a class. What would your class be? I have a feeling that if there was anything that I would be suited for, it would be how to determine what is real. <laughs> <laughs> Because I feel like, uh, if anything, we've talked a lot about how to assess if something is fake or real or how uh -huh. to critically think about stuff. I don't know. That could work. That's a great one. Here's the thing. At Nebula Classes, there's a new class dropping every single week led by your favorite creators and experts in their fields. Better yet, also, since Classes is a part of Nebula, you will also get access to all of the exclusive and ad-free content from all of our other creators. Over 10,000 videos with new things to discover every Every single day. And I know that you and I, Tristan, have talked about making some Nebula exclusive episodes of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There might be some movies. There might be some dungeons and or dragons involved. Oh, hoo -hoo. so uh, you can get a head start on that if you want to by heading over to Nebula. In fact, uh, you can watch any of Nebula stuff just about anywhere with the uh, iPhone, iPad, Android, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku apps. It's available everywhere. Super high quality content. And it's normally just ten dollars a month but if you go and they don't want me to tell you this but they don't want you to go, know <laughs> they don't want you to know this but if you go to nebula.app slash probs not aliens i have to whisper now it's a they're secret cheat code that we made yeah if you go to nebula.app slash probs not aliens you can sign up for the annual plan for just eight dollars per month or even better eighty dollars per year just eighty dollars per year for the classes and 
and all of the rest of Nebula. You get all of it. We were able to hack the system. That's right. And they, the math doesn't even check out. $8 per month and then $80 per year? They're missing two months there. No, that's just a better deal for you there if you get it annually. Those are the hacked months. That's the hacked months, you see. That's nebula.app slash probs not aliens to get this deal. And hey, look, if you're already a Nebula subscriber, upgrading to classes is just an extra $5 per month for the you know subscription you already got gone. So even cheaper for you all. So once again, that's nebula.app slash probs not aliens. Get Nebula classes for only $80 per year, which also includes all of Nebula's thousands of other uh, fantastic shows and podcasts. Plus, you'll be supporting educational creators. That us. That's us. <sighs> We're back, baby. So we the did Dendera it. dong, sorry, Dendera light, um, it, mm-hmm, which is mm-hmm. not a dong. Very important. Not a dong. Not a dong. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mummy, sorry. Just title mummy, this, t- sorry. <laughs> mummy. <laughs> just title this episode, uh, the very serious episode that is definitely not about a dong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What is this thing? Because we don't have we don't we don't have a physical we it, we don't have like an actual thing of it right it's we only have this you know this representation of it in this sort of relief form we don't actually have like a physical no thing to hold no. all right all we have is this relief of it and this is also and you'll notice this a lot in pseudo archaeology we have uh, one relief uh, removed from its context of everything else in the temple. <laughs> Oh. And without much attention to the uh, sort of greater cultural understanding right. of art and art forms, I just finished listening to our two-parter on uh, the Renaissance paintings. Uh-huh. And it's like, ah, uh, we meet it's again. All context, yeah. You gotta, you gotta know what you're. You gotta know what you're talking about here. Yeah. So here's how Ancient Aliens frames what mainstream archaeologists say. Oh, boy. <sighs> These mainstream frauds, am I right? They have to have some explanation. There's got to be one, and it's got to be mundane, that it's a lotus flower, and what appears around it is the aroma of the lotus flower. So it's just a very odd depiction of a flower, which is... So, okay, this is... This is this ancient is aliens trying to right. say what Egyptologists think this is. This would be like if I said to you, Tristan... I know who made the movie The Thing, and people are going to tell you that it was John Carpenter. Oh, it's John Carpenter's The Thing. That's what they're going to tell you, all right? They're going to say, everyone else around you is going to say, oh, it's it's John Carpenter's The Thing. But I'm here to tell you that it's, it's, it's Cronenberg's The Thing, Mm -hmm. all right? And that's the real answer. That's a, that's a movie fact. Mm-hmm. That's a movie fact. Mainstream movie buffs are going to say it's not Cronenberg, but we all know that it was. But it's a body horror and all Cronenberg Cronenberg made. It looks like a body horror movie and Cronenberg yeah. makes body horror. So therefore, this right. is a body horror. This is a this is a this is a Cronenberg. Yeah, exactly. This is so scummy what they're doing. They're 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 literally saying what it actually I presumably we well, you'll get into it. But it sounds like they're saying exactly what it actually is or what we believe today what most actual academics and scholars of, of, of this field believe that it is and they're saying people are going to tell you that and it's so boring and it's boring but what it what's cooler is if it's a light bulb you're very close so yeah. what they're doing is what's called uh-huh. a straw man argument so mm. uh, if anyone doesn't know what that is, a straw man argument is essentially when you are trying to make another position look bad, you make a sort of facetious or extremely weak or dishonest uh, representation of what the other person's argument is so that you can very easily push it over. So it's just saying like, oh, the Egyptians just think that it's a flower. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the answer is that kind of... But it's also a whole bunch of depictions of uh, very important stuff to the cosmological understanding of the universe to the Egyptian people. <laughs> so, OK, so they're they're being like, oh, it's just a flower. Why would they make a flower look like this? And it's like, well, because there's actual meaning and significance behind this whole thing that you're cutting out. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Uh, a lot of the Dendera stuff has inscriptions and other images and writing alongside of it, writing that we can translate. Okay, easy enough. And if you did something that Ancient Aliens does not seem interested in doing and you read the hieroglyphics and you look at the other things in the same room, 
Ooh, you get the translation boring. that is like literally like the description of what it is you are witnessing. Mm, sure. And, and they tell a different story. They don't say anything about light bulbs, but they do say a lot about um, something called Harsomtis. Harsomtis. Who is a snake rising from a lotus flower with his body being okay. carried by a jed pillar on something called the day barge. Okay. So the uh, the day barge being the uh, the cable. Oh, it's not a cable. No, it's like a it's like a mode of transportation. It's a boat. It's a boat, and we're viewing it from a sideways angle. Yes, and so it looks like a flat cable. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing it now because you see it. And there are a lot of yeah. symbols in here that are linked to. Instead of maybe electric, electrical engineering or light bulbs, but more about Egyptian mythology. Right. Yeah, this doesn't look like a user manual for the light bulb. It does look like something a little bit more significant. Yeah. So let me just tell you about the Egyptian idea of how the universe came into being. Yeah. So the first thing that emerged from uh, what, they, what they... Basically, their idea is that there was a sea of nothingness. Cool. And that uh, called the primordial sea of Nun or Nun, uh, sometimes also referred to the sea of two knives. Okay. And then in that sea was a lotus flower. Oh. And what happened is that the universe sprung out of this lotus flower, which came out of the sea. Because an interesting thing about lotus flowers, and this is sort of why they always get, because they, they have religious significance in a lot of places where they show up because they do something very yeah. interesting. Okay, which is yeah. that they disappear at night. They're a water plant, right? Yeah. And at night, the flower goes underwater. And in the morning, oh. it reemerges and blooms again. So you can imagine that if you were to see that regularly, that would be actually quite like, you know, that could, you could see a lot of, you could attach a lot of meaning to that, right? Of course, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that the, the bubble, the, the bulb, is sort of the emergence of the universe out of nothingness. Mmm, yeah, just blooming into existence. Mm-hmm. And specifically, uh, only one god uh, wh- that was around for the um, creation of the universe, the one who is holding said light bulb, Atum-Ra. Mmm, Atum-Ra. The, 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 the god that emerges from the universe, this bubble of air, and makes the universe. Uh-huh. So, yeah, uh, that's what the depiction is here. Um the flowers supposedly gave birth to Atumra, and there are lots of depictions of a lotus in the shape of a quote-unquote lamp, similar to the one that we're talking about, the Temple of Hathor in Tendera. Mm-hmm. And Atum, the god who created everything else after this, is sometimes represented as a snake. A snake. A f- uh, or a light bulb filament. Yeah, or... With snake-like features. There you go. So the, the, the thing that you see... What you were seeing depicted is Atumra coming out of the lotus. Coming out of the lotus. That is the, the sort of lotus that existed in the sea of nothingness. And the bubble around it being the universe yeah. being created around him. Oh, okay. Of something coming from nothing. All right. Yeah, no, this... I mean, because here's the thing. The, the f- quote-unquote filament is so clearly a snake. Like, I cannot fathom how someone would not would look at that and say it's not a snake yeah everything else like i could maybe see like you know here and there but um yeah what you've described makes a lot more like looking at this photo now yeah you see the lotus flower you see the snake it's all surrounded by this bubble that's supposed to be like the glass bulb yeah, it mm-hmm. all fits. And that the bubble's actually being held up by a goddess by the name of Noon, yes. who is the personification of that sea of nothingness. Yeah. Because is she, the... because if you think about it, the lotus raises out of the water, right? As it does in yes. the morning. She is raising up the lotus that then brings the universe into existence. Ah, is that the person on the far right? It's the holding person it up? Um, yeah, yeah, holding it up. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, sometimes you'll also see representations of uh, the sun god in this um, with a scarab 
beetle being uh, another thing. Scarabs show up a lot in Egyptian uh, mythology. Sure. And their motifs are very spe- dung beetles, basically. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like basically like uh, bet- in Egyptian mythology, um, there's different aspects. There's different gods. A very long time. So there's also another like it could be Atum. It could also be Kefri. So a lot of like different um, names and motifs for the same thing. Sure. And yeah, the and also uh, the water's lifting up the solar barge of Ra for its first journey across the sky, i.e. the first time the sun rose. Wow. Yeah. I mean, gosh, when you when you sort of hear all of that and you look at this, you look at this image, it feels much more significant and meaningful with that context. And so it just goes back to what they were saying where they were like, oh, it's just they're going to have their boring answer and they're going to say it's just a flower and it's boring. And it's like, Mm -hmm. no, man, like it's all it's like the creation of the entire universe in depicted in like one simple image. Yeah. And it's like it's awesome. It actually kind of reminds me a lot of um, the King Pakal sarcophagus engraving yeah like this looks like him operating a spaceship and it's like well it's a very sophisticated uh depiction of him entering the underworld with like the Mm -hmm. snake that represents like the thing that he rides to the to the afterlife and like its beard and like there's all this like stuff like it's a big deal and also on these things is something called the jed pillar which um is a symbol of the god osiris because there's two osiris and isis and one of them got dismembered you can't say that on this episode. <laughs> God damn it. Basically, Osiris was like cut to pieces and I believe... No, wait, okay. Osiris's wife restores her husband's body, allowing him to posthumously conceive their son Horus. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom, for teaching me things. But the Jed Pillar is uh, sort of um, this symbol that is a... I think I'm trying, I'm digging into my own personal memories here, which we have learned is dangerous territory on this show. It's supposed to be a uh, representation of stability, Uh but it's like sort of a uh, abstract symbol of a spine. Okay. uh, Which I think has something to do with the, uh, with Osiris, um, who was like famously dismembered and put back together and all that kind of stuff. So that connection I'm not exactly sure about and I don't really want to like sit here and like look up a bunch of stuff while we're recording a podcast but uh-huh. um, <laughs> but yeah like uh, but yeah Fair. so like the thing so you, this is a symbol that shows up a lot in Egyptian mythology and it turns out that if you yeah. study context and look at other symbols and different things that happens you get interesting stuff yeah and so you do see that there are a lot of symbols here that show creation myths, ceremonies, uh, gods and their pantheon, concepts of Absolutely. birth and rebirth and the cre- and creation, which feels like it's something a little bit more uh, apt to put in a temple than like, yeah. you know. It's, and it's also just really interesting to me how they can fit all of that meaning on such a, you know, like such a... Um, like there's not a whole lot going. It's not super elaborate this image, but like just just the sliver that we have, mm-hmm. like it's all there. It's all that stuff's there. Now I'm just imagining like if we did if we thought if we did this in modern day, like or if we did like what they thought they did, and like uh-huh. just like had a church where instead of the stations of the cross, you just have like an IKEA manual for how to like install <laughs> this piece of technical equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It would just be something like how to how to upload a TikTok or something, you know, like something that is like slightly mm-hmm. uh, beyond what the actual. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, I don't think anyone at my parents' uh, church knows how to upload a TikTok. So if, to them, they'd see it and be like, "Whoa!" Well, if you turn to is... Psalms thirteen eighteen, it tells you exactly mm-hmm. how to make a TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do the fun dances. Yeah. Um, the, so there's a, there's a couple other small things to also mention, which is that um, there's no historical text at all that discusses any use of electricity in Egypt, which you think uh-huh. would probably show up. You think you would. Yeah. And also, if it is uh, one of these uh, vacuum tube type light bulbs, this um, what's it called? Uh, these uh, crooks tubes. Crooks tubes. That would be troublesome, mostly because crooks tubes. The reason why we don't use them today. Is be- I was going to ask, yeah. Uh, is because they use a lot of electricity and often need uh, gases like argon in order to function. Ah. Uh, well, we did cover in a previous episode that the pyramids also generate um, there you go. power. Actually, the right? most common thing, I believe this is actually a depiction, the depiction of the Dendera light in, I found out that there was a uh, plastic, like, 
kind of like a like a diorama of a den of one of these Dendera light bulbs in oh, nice. uh, Eric Von Daniken's like of short-lived uh, Ancient Aliens theme of park. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and in the theme park, it's powered by uh, Baghdad batteries. Um, oh which, my which, God. which one we know would not generate any power, and two, we're in a completely different area of the world. <laughs> Is there enough on that theme park to do an episode about it? Because that would be fascinating. I would to, I, to dive more into. I, it. I would love to. I would love to see if there's like a video tour of it, but unfortunately, it is shut down. So I don't know how much. Yeah. But yeah. Um, if it was still around, I have a feeling that a uh, trip to Switzerland would be in our future at some point. Oh yes. So there is that. Uh, so there's the fact that it would require a lot of electricity and we don't have any, like there would be other, if they were able to make argon gas and they were able yeah. to get enough electricity to power a light bulb that huge mm-hmm. and also make glass. Like here's the thing. These tubes are, are usually pretty small to make one that a crooks tube that would have that much mm-hmm. vacuum power. That would be that big would require a huge amount of electricity. That's and true. furthermore, um, if it, if anything happened to it, it would explode. <laughs> Because yeah, that is a lot I, of electricity in a vacuum, um, like in a like high pressure vacuum thing, and it's really yes. big. And glass, notoriously not the most forgiving of materials. And there's a big snake inside. Yeah. And what happens when he gets out? <laughs> no, I guess we haven't really talked. To, I don't know if we touched much about the the scale of it, but just from the original image, it is a light bulb that is about two or three times the size of a person at least. Mm -hmm. Also the crook, the, what are they called? Those light bulbs, the crooks tubes. They don't, I don't even, do they even have filament like that snake? They don't, right? I think they do have a little bit of something like that. Oh, they have a little bit of something, Um, but it doesn't. Okay. The other thing too, is that if you were to have light bulbs and electrical stuff, I don't know if you've ever been outside, um, but our electrified society shows a lot of signs of it being there, like, you know, power lines and power yeah. plants and uh-huh. climate change and like all of those sure. things that are signs that we are harnessing electric power. Mm-hmm. And we don't see any signs of that in ancient Egypt. See, this is where it's all coming together, right? Because now you've got this other theory. You've got that you've got this light. And then it's like, well, what's it powered by? And it's like, all right, well, we've got this other theory where it, the pyramid itself is can generate power and that can power things. And it's like, OK, well, how come there's no like power grid or anything like that? And it's like, oh, uh, there is. But it's around the entire world connected by all these other th- pyramids the and lines. whatnot. The ley lines and, and just any sort of significant thing or just pyramids in general connecting to each other sending power it's like it's all there Mm -hmm. man kelly wanted to mention to me uh that uh, i mentioned that she does believe that the earth is a d20 and that when you see like um i think there was um we talked recently about a sort of pure like uh, we were talking about the yonaguni monument that those are the corners of it those like every time you see a weird mountain where there's like a really good corner that's the corner of the d20 Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, so ancient aliens people have responded to all of this by saying that actually it's a special light bulb, that the reason why there aren't like electrical stuff everywhere is because they didn't use it every day, but there's like rituals no. that surround it. And there was a special priesthood that kept the technology secret and they only brought it out on special occasions. They brought up the light bulb sure. on special occasions. <laughs> it's the Dendera light bulb is a sometimes. Thing. Yeah. And also... It means that they would uh, bring out the artifact to do the ritual and then they would destroy it during the ceremony, which would conveniently leave no evidence that it ever happened. Oh, (laughs) they would destroy it so that we couldn't find it later. Mm -hmm. This thing that is and just to reiterate, you said if it broke, it would be like it would be like disastrous. It would explode. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. cool, 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 cool. Just wanted to Do you remember? um, uh, I guess you are. Did you ever have a, a tube TV? Uh, yeah, for sure. So um, if you ever, because basically the technology behind a crooks tube is similar to the technology that makes a, a CRT TV work. And if you ever oh. break the screen on one of those, you know that it is a uh, extremely dramatic situation. <laughs> That's true. Was Is it possible that the Dendera light powered a really big TV? Yeah, they, they, that, that, they come together. That makes sense because then if yeah. it's New Year's, if I remember correctly on New Year's, that's when uh, they yeah. do the Mr. Bean marathon and they watch like, Mr. Bean skits back to back. Yes. At least that was my New Year's tradition. Yeah, yeah. No, it's universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So they would get together and watch (laughs) the Egyptian version of Mr. Bean uh, with Mr. Chick Frank's. Yeah, on Frank's 2000 inch TV. (laughs) That's, that's That's what Weird Al was singing about. Perfect. We got it. 
Man, that that was like uh, there was a time where people were getting really big TVs, but we hadn't done LCD slash like you know. Oh, they were thick. TVs. Yeah, and we're like it yeah. was like a TV that weighed like a thousand pounds and took up like half the yes. room. And I was like, mm-hmm. I just remember that that we had that very awkward moment between those two points. <laughs> it was like, yeah, this TV is like. <laughs> 2,000 pounds and you have to like get a truck and like four people to move it into your house. And you have to like basically yeah. take out a wall to have it. You do have to live in that house forever though because you will not be able to, the TV will settle into the foundation of that yeah. house. Yeah. When now you can have a TV that's the exact same size but you can like, it's like almost wallpaper at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, technology. So the problem, though, is, of course, there's nothing in any of the text that surrounds any of these depictions or anything on the wall that would back up any of this. And yeah, it's a the big only one. So, the only time they ever mention is that they call these priests the keepers of the light giving source, which is sounds very convincing in ancient aliens. Um, unfortunately, apparently this is um, made up. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> they just they keep making stuff up. Yeah. I mean, it's go- I mean, I was going to ask how that's going for him, but pretty good, it seems. Mm-hmm. And it also is interesting that specifically in this temple where they had these light bulbs is one where we found hundreds of years of soot on the ceiling of it. Oh, my God. Um, so they can't. <laughs> that's just that's just sloppy. Mm-hmm. What's very interesting, though, is that apparently that doesn't matter because the Dendera reliefs have uh, mm-hmm. are a regular drawing of uh, of tourism to Egypt, and people come to see these carvings on a regular basis. It's a big thing. Um, but uh, essentially, at the end of the day, it's another, hey, a thing looks like a thing. Mm. Aren't you glad? We did another thing looks like a thing, and also that people in the that. past uh, wouldn't have, like, if an artist was you know, making this day would be like, this kind of looks like a light bulb. Maybe I'll design it differently. But a person who's never heard of a light bulb in their life would right. never be able to be like, hey, I sh- th- this, this is what the universe coming out of a flower would look like. I know. It's it's creative. It's artistic. Mm-hmm. It's not literal, you know? And so, yeah, I like it. I like look. This is These are like some of my favorite episodes because I like being able to look at art from the past, from these ancient civilizations and like, learn a little bit more about them and like through their art and just, and sort of see like, yeah, I would, you know, before this episode, I would look at that and be like, it kind of looks light bulbish. I mean, it's definitely a snake on the inside. It's not a, not a filament, but like, I sort of see where people are getting at it, but no, like being able to fully understand the meaning behind this piece is just awesome and i love it and i love doing it yeah this is the magic of the podcast because i knew that like just straight up debunking everything like ha huh, pwned with facts and logic would be fun and we'd get some good goofs as we got today yeah. but uh now you know a little bit about egypt's uh cosmology and um isn't that don't you feel yeah. all the more richer because of that that's my favorite part I of this show do. is that we get to bring some the cool actual stuff in it that yeah. gets covered up with uh light bulbs <laughs> and i think i mean i'm proud of us we didn't really make a single certain kind of joke you know what i mean this this all Mm -hmm. we We didn't didn't get blue blue with it and i mean we went all the way to the end of the episode and now we're dong done damn mummy (laughs) mummy sorry mummy sorry mummy Anyway, oh, man. Um, this is a fantastic episode. I loved learning this. Thank you, Tristan. And if you want to see pictures of what we're talking about, you can go follow us on Twitter at Probs Not Aliens. It's a very fun Twitter. Yeah. Was that the end of the episode or did you want to? That is the end of the episode. Yeah, we did it. We did. We did it. <laughs> All right. I, did, did I didn't it. want to keep going. If you were like, no, I've got some other stuff to say. I've got six more things. OK. I didn't even make you sad yet. You didn't make me sad yet. Um, no, no. Tristan, where can people find you outside of this podcast? If they're like, I need more Tristan, where can they find you on the internet? Well, if you are a, a Nebula supporter, you can go to nebula.app and find Step Back there. Or if you are other people, you can go to stepbackhistory.com and uh, you will find my YouTube channel where I talk about history and uh, about um, why the past is important for understanding today. But Scott Word. That's me. Um, I heard that you also are a maker of video I do that things. yeah I do that uh, you can find my YouTube channel at nerds it's just nerd sync just look up nerd sync uh n-e-r-d-s-y-n-c I'm also on nebula 
nebula.app slash nerdsync, I believe. We're going to plug Nebula like crazy now that you both, now that we're both on it. We're in the family. Yeah, we're there. So you go do that. And then um, we also have reviews. Ooh, ooh, I have a thing for this. I don't even think I told you. You've been tooling around with Notion, so I imagine something happened. I downloaded all of the reviews and I put them into a Notion database. <gasps> um. Do I get to read them? How how I will get to how I will update this database in the future? Great question. But uh, for right now, if I can find where I saved it at, good lord, Scott. There we go. Where did you right click save it as? I knew where it was. I just forgot how to get there. Right click save was save was. Where is it? I would like to thank the following people for writing reviews of Probs Not Aliens on Apple Podcasts. I actually have all of the names in front of me now, so I'm very excited about that. Thank you to S. Marcy. Thank you to Jeremy Wiggibs. Wigbins? I can't remember. Jeremy Wingdings. Yeah. Grant Baugh, Christopher McLovin, and just we're going to end it here, but we have so many more in future episodes. Azzy MJ. Thank you all for giving us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Uh, yeah. That means a lot. We keep it up. I'm going to read all of your names on future episodes. And uh, Tristan, why are reviews so important to us? Why, why am I making a big deal about this? Well, um, I did hear rumor that YouTube is apparently making a podcast platform, but oh. uh, at the moment, we don't have any way to algorithmically recommend this podcast to new people. It's true. Podcasts are still the the one media form that doesn't have a recommendation system. So you have to like mm -hmm. find them and talk to your friends, which means that this podcast spreads like COVID through the air by you oh. talking about it to other people. So if you know somebody who might find this show entertaining, uh, be do us a real solid by uh, by by talking about it with them. Yeah, it it blows my mind how many people have uh, have found out about this show now. Just like find about new weird corners of the world where people <laughs> I know have found the show. I I it's love it. I love it. I love that people love this show. Um, it just brings so much joy to my heart. So thank you so much. Yeah. Tell your friends and the best place to send people if they're trying to find our show, is probsnotaliens.com. It's a very simple website that has links to everywhere you can find the show on all your favorite podcast platforms and uh, also just other ways to get in contact with us. Send us topics to talk about. There's a form there. Um, all sorts of ask us questions. There's a form there. Maybe we need to do a form for corrections. Who knows? That could be... I definitely, uh, I, I resolved today that I was going to make a step back or sorry, not, it's probably not aliens. There's my first correction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's IPNA uh, corrections episode. And I was like, how am I going to like scoop up all the sources for this? And I was like, what if I just scraped every mention of props.aliens yep. on Twitter? Because that's probably <laughs> where they most of them are. That's true. Um, so look forward to that. And uh, until, I mean, I guess that's it, right? Thank you so much for listening. My name is Scott Nicewander. I'm Tristan Johnson. And the truth is out there. Probably. Whoa, that was menacing.